Hey guys, I'm a science potato, and today I've got a video on how to do part manipulation in Kira. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up a file. We've got our classic Benchy here. So when it comes to part manipulation, we're mostly concerned about this left hand toolbar here. You can see everything's blacked out, and that's because we haven't selected a model. Now that a model has been selected, we have a wide range of functions we can use here. So the first one is the move command. If you notice when you mouse over these, they say what the function is and there's a, a capital letter in parentheses there. That capital letter is the hotkey for using that function. So for the move command, we can just press T on the keyboard. I assume they use T for translate rather than M for move. But with that selected, we can now click on our part and we can drag it around freely. We can also click on these individual axis arrows to move our part just along that one axis. We also have our Z axis here, where you can see if I try and move it up, Kira is set to snap it back down to the build plate. That can be disabled though, and you can lift parts up if you want. But if I move it down, you can see it actually sinks below the build plate there. What that's gonna do is any part of the model that is below the build plate here, it will just get cut right off and the model will not, the G code will not be generated for it. So if we take a look at our preview here, we can see the outline of where the boat model is, but we can see there's no G code being rendered there. So it's only gonna start from the build plate itself. Now we'll lift that back up. Next, we have our scale command, which is hockey S. So we can see by default, uniform scaling is turned on. So if I drag one of these axis arrows, you can see the part gets uniformly scaled. Although if I were to turn this off, we can now stretch it out, really make it look weird. But what if you wanna get it back to normal? Well, there's a reset button here, and now it's back to normal. So we'll keep uniform scaling turned on. If we wanted, we could scale it via a height. We can see it's 48 millimeters height, tall. Maybe we want it to be 75 millimeters tall. And now it has been scaled uniformly to that height. We could also go via percentage. Say we wanted it to be 200% scale. Very easy, just type in a value and there you go. These dimensions are the bounding box dimensions which means they are the widest dimension along an axis. So we can see X is red, here's our red axis. So the tip on this side and the farthest tip on this side directly across is 120 millimeters. Now we'll reset that again. Then we'll move on to our rotate function. So now we have three rotational axes here. And as I orbit around, you can see how they work. They're very easy to manipulate as long as you're camera is properly oriented on them. Like if I wanted to turn this red axis here, I wouldn't want to go like this and, and try and rotate it. It's much better to look at it properly. This is the orientation where I would want to rotate my red axis. Now we can see it's nice and smooth and easily controllable. And for the blue axis, I would want to look at it this way and rotate it. There's also a reset button. There's also a lay flat button. If you notice, snap rotation is off. So if I turn it on, it rotates in 15 degree increments. I usually recommend keeping that on. But if I turn it off, now it rotates freely. So it doesn't really look like I did much, but it rotated ever so slightly. And if I kind of look at the part like this, it looks like it's pretty much flat on the build plate. But if I look down along the build plate, even though it looks pretty flat, as soon as we look underneath, you can see it's bright yellow here and dark here. That means only the back half of it is actually touching the build plate. So if I go into preview mode, we can see the first layer wants to end right here rather than going all the way across. But if you're just looking at it like this, you wouldn't even know that. So that's why it's, a, it's highly recommended to keep snap rotation enabled. 
Otherwise, the slightest little click, you might not even think you did anything, but you've tilted it 0 0.2 degrees or something. Now you're going to screw up that first layer. And if you're not sure if your part's flat or not, you can just hit this lay flat button here. And now Kira will compute the nearest flat surface to the build plate and align your part with that. So it's not necessarily going to pick the most optimal flat face. It's just going to pick the nearest flat face to its current position. And you can also align a specific face with build plate. So I can click on this, click on the top there, and now it's flipped it upside down. And I'll just hit reset. Now we've got the mirror command. So it's very simple. It just mirrors your part along an axis. It's important to note when we click on the green axis, it doesn't really appear to move, but we can see this text on the back is rotating. So if you have a left-handed object and you want to make it right-handed, you can just use the mirror command to easily do that. I'm going to undo these. There we go. Next we have our per model settings. This is a nice feature. So say you're printing four different parts, but I want this one right here to have different settings. Well, I can click on per model settings, go down to select settings. I can pick my line width or any other setting on this list that I want. And then it will appear here. And now I can change this variable. Oops. Change that to a 0.6 mil line width. And we'll hit slice. And we'll take a quick look at the G code to see if we can see a noticeable change. All right, so now we're visualizing our G code here. So we can see some slight differences, how we have a clear cut line between these walls. And on this side, they look mostly smushed together, which means our line width is a little too big. Showing that we do have a 0.6 mil line width on this part and a 0.5 mil line width on these other parts. So that's a really awesome feature. Another thing you can do with it is you can set an object to print as a support structure. So if I load in another file here, we got this cube. Normally, this cube will print as a nice solid cube based on our settings. But if we tell it to print as support, now we can see it has a cross hatching pattern here. Just delete some of these benchies. So now when I hit slice and it generates a G code, we can see that cube is now being printed as if it were a support structure and not a solid cube. So if you don't like the way Kira is generating a support structure, you can just design your own support structure, import it in here, and just tell Kira that it is support and not a solid model. In this case, if we wanted to say support the little front end of the boat here, we can just take our cube, scale it down, place it in front of the boat, just like that. Now we'll hit slice. And we can see that it is printing a support structure on the front of that boat. So that's really nice. It can do a few other things as well. If you want to overlap models, get negatives and intersects and stuff like that. The last one is a support blocker. So when you have a model selected, you can click on the support blocker button. And now if I click anywhere on the 3D model, it will generate a cube of negative space. And no support material will get generated inside of this cube. So if Kira is putting some support somewhere you don't want it to be, 
you can just put this cube in its spot and now no support material will get generated there. If you want to delete it, you can just click on it again. Or you can use all of these other part manipulation commands on that cube. So with that selected, I can scale my cube and I can rotate it if I need to or move it around anywhere. Yeah. So those are your part manipulation commands. The last thing we'll talk about is if you right click on your model, you'll see you can center the selected model. You can delete it. You can multiply your selected model. You can select all models and we can use all of these part manipulation commands with multiple models selected. So I could scale these all and I could rotate them all together. I can also arrange all models, which will lay them out on the build plate for us. And I can clear the build plate, which will delete everything. And that is your part manipulation in Kira. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you like our content, and I'll be making more videos in the future. Thanks. Bye.